Hi everyone, Alaska here, and I wanted to make a quick video. Um, I've had some questions um, that have come through the comments that um, asked if I could speak about my writing, and um, I thought I would cover a little bit of that. Um, now I do have codes that are going to want to come through as I'm talking. I have already connected with Source, and I have connected with Gaia. Um, I wrapped around Gaia's Crystal Heart, but before I get to that and what I saw, um, I did, when I connected with Source, and I've noticed that I've been doing something lately that I haven't done in the last year, and um, kind of what led up to my awakening um, to where the synchronicity started coming and I knew something definitely was going on. And I went through a period for a year where I found myself praying to God every night. Every night, it was like clockwork. I didn't forget. It was the first thing that I knew I had to do the moment that I laid down. And I've noticed that I've started that up again. I usually still pray, um, or I have um, over since then, but uh, some nights I would forget, and it just, it kind of changed um, because maybe I was meditating three times a day. <laughs> I'm not sure, but um, every night for probably the last, two weeks maybe I've noticed that the moment my head hits the pillow I'm already starting to pray and when I've been meditating during the day when I connect with source um, before I would connect with source I would make the connection I would see um, a light come down sometimes the light changes usually it's white um, and it'll become like a pillar of light and the color will come when I connect with Gaia but today I saw first it was green with like sparkles in it and then it changed to blue with sparkles in it and then back to green, back to blue, back to green, black to blue and as I brought it down um, I was praying and I was asking God please help um, the highest light beings come in to help me deliver these codes that are really going to make a difference with everybody who watches this video and as I'm praying and I'm bringing um, the light down into me and I'm breathing it in and I'm pausing as I'm doing my breath and I go and I connect with Gaia and as soon as I wrap around Gaia's crystal heart I see the bright gold and I saw the bright gold yesterday when I did a video too but as I saw the gold I saw a pyramid um, yesterday it was a gate um, this was a pyramid this time with the bright gold but I almost thought there was a connection a little bit to a gate so, um, maybe that will resonate with somebody and, um, you'll be able to comment below on what you believe that that means. And that is what I saw as I, um, brought the gold up, um, back to make a pillar with this blue and green. Green for me usually is healing, so that could be some of the codes coming in. Blue, um, I usually connect this to, um, Sirius sometimes, but it can mean other things. Um, let me see, am I missing anything? I don't think I'm missing anything. Um, that's kind of what I just picked up today. I have my Desert Rose, and I have this, um, quartz right here, um, Tremulated Quartz, I believe, and, um, it's actually my husband's, I kind of stole it. <laughs> He's away, so I'm using it, and uh, it's really good. So, I... I connected with them and um, I wanted to talk about some of the questions that I've been asked uh, and that's been about my writing and I have been a writer for almost 10 years I started no over 10 years I started when I was 26 I got published um, a few months after I actually began writing and people will ask me have you um, have you always been a writer? Um, what inspired you to start writing? And um, most ex like expect me to say something like, oh, I've been always doing it. I did write poetry when I was 14 or so. It was very dark poetry. I was in a very dark time during that, um, that period. It, um, it all kind of rooted from something that happened when I was 13 that really kind of um, destroyed me a little bit. So, I did start writing poetry there. I wrote it for probably a good two years, and then I quit. And um, life happened, and 
I didn't start writing again until I was 26, but before that I was actually um, a big reader. I was reading the historical romances. I was going through like one a day. I was like eating them up, devouring them. I would go to the thrift store. I would buy bags, like 99 cents, 20 books at a time. And I would just sit there and I would just read and read and read. And I would start at six, seven in the morning. Um, around the time I would get my kids up for school, I'd get them off. And then I would sit there and I would read all day. I would cook dinner reading. Um, sometimes I wouldn't be going back to sleep until five in the morning until I finished the book. So, big, big time reader. And um, I actually had a love of it when I was younger and then lost that too for a while and then it came back. So, I, um, I went through probably a few months of reading like that. And at the time I was, um, I wasn't married yet, but I was uh, close to being married and um, should have been a telltale sign right here. But uh, he asked me um, one day he had gotten home from work and in a bad mood. And it was a very abusive relationship, but he, mental and physical, but he asked me, um, or he said, why don't you start writing instead of reading and earn some damn money? And the way he had said it, it wasn't like that, trust me. But, um, it was enough to kind of give me pause and I thought, I could never be a writer. Like, I, I'm not good enough for that. And that was the thing with him. He had put that in my head. I was not good enough for anything. And, um, it was kind of crazy when he told me that, it kind of just hit me, and I thought, you know what, I think I am going to write a book. And I was angry at this point, and, um, kind of more angry at myself that I, I didn't think that I could do it, that I, it never even crossed my mind because I felt like I wasn't good enough. So, um, I did, I sit down the next day, and... I probably wrote as much as I was reading, and I did not stop until I finished a 90,000 historical, 90,000 word historical romance. It was horrible. <laughs> the writing was absolutely horrible, but I finished it, and I finished it in three weeks, I think it was, and I just sat there, and um, I cried, and I knew it was bad, but I had finished a book. I had written a book. And it was just mind-blowing to me. And um, I gave it to him to read. And he read it. And he kind of just looked at me. And he's like, I think you're supposed to be a writer. And I was like, yeah, I think I am. And I wrote story after story after story after that. I didn't stop until I got published a few months later. And, um, yeah, I stayed published um, with that publishing company for five years. And then... Um, I got published with another publishing company while I was published with that one, and um, I stayed at that one for about a year until I decided that self-publishing was probably the best path for me. This is the point, I believe, that um, I started actually going through my awakening, and in comes the shadow work. My books were getting extremely dark. I was shedding things, purging traumas inside of me that I had held in for over a decade. Um, lots of lots of work and for another five years even t even now I still when I write I am purging I am doing shadow work I am getting rid of things ancestrally past lives you name it I, that's what I'm getting rid of it and I actually didn't know I wrote a series um three years ago I believe now my 24 690 series it is the first book that, um, I actually had to change my name because I write under Alaska Angelini. I actually changed my name because I was already kind of writing with the dark edge, but this is where I let go, and this is where the real work started. I, I told my readers, you may not like this stuff, and that's quite alright, I'm going to write it under a different name, you can read it if you like, and, um, if not, that's perfectly fine, but we're going from dark here. I'm already kind of writing with a dark edge. I'm going to step into pitch black. And that's actually what I, um, I kind of trademarked because it was my brand. It was a releasing a part of me and being completely exposed and open. And 
more traumas and this is where a past life had come in and I found out not only was it a past life it was one that I was repeating over and over and over and I saw that as I wrote the story because it was um, written underground in the subterranean fortress inside this mountain and I have written other stories I noticed underground too it was always underground inner earth under the surface of the earth and I just kept doing that and it was this pattern in my writing that I um bet between dreams and meditation I started realizing wait a minute I've lived this before uh, before and before and before and just constantly so that's kind of where my writing went um, my writing is extremely dark if you ever decide to read it I write under AA dark that's the last Angelini kind of abbreviated AA dark and that is deep shadow work and it's not only shadow work for me but I believe that there's codes and triggers in there for the readers who read it to help with any kind of shadows that they need to release as well and I think it does help them do that um, uh, yeah, that's, I always tell people the best thing that you can do is release it somehow. Some people paint, um, dark paintings, not even dark paintings, just stuff that help them. And, um, my shadow work comes in for its writing. Uh, it usually starts with one sentence and I don't usually plot. I'll kind of have an idea where it might go. But I don't know how the middle, the end, I don't do chapters, anything. I start off with a sentence and I go. And that's what works best for me because I feel um, my subconscious is kind of more doing the work. Um, sometimes I listen with music. I just kind of hear the music. My fingers are going and I'm kind of just seeing a movie play in my head. And I'm not even really sure what I'm writing down. And that shows very clearly when I read it over the first time and I'm fixing a million things. But yeah, if you're interested in writing, um, if you've thought about it, I encourage it with everything I have. I think you would be absolutely amazed how much more you open when you start releasing that. And releasing the shadows, releasing the past lives, the karmic, the ancestral, everything. Because it's going to come out in the writing. Um, I promise you that. So, um, I think that's really kind of all I can say about... My writing, I was um, expecting codes to come through throughout, but I think I just kind of blabbed the whole time. <laughs> so, um, I am already connected to Source and Gaia, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of close my eyes and get real back onto that level and see what kind of codes come through. First of all, I feel a lot back here in third eye, a lot of pressure. Okay, yeah, there's, um, I want to say codes. Possibly codes coming in through for here. Junto com o teratesta. I'm still kind of trying to read more into them. Um, I've noticed the light language comes, just it just flows. I don't even have to think about it anymore. I don't have to try to connect. Um, and a certain like level to to get there it's just it's just coming 
um, while I'm kind of more paying attention to what I feel, the codes almost feel different when I kind of more tap into them now. And I can, I can feel that these two, and even the heart and the throat, this is what I did yesterday, from the heart up, there's something going on, um, unblocking, shutukutushita, and this flow, there's a flow going here, shutukutotejtakataya, and the knot, shutukutotejtakataya, and the untakata. Yeah, I feel like this, um, the light language and the codes are going to just kind of help people more with this and up. Um, I feel like the last year or two, it's been a lot of lower from the heart down work. And now we're kind of working up, even above the crown, up here. Jutukushta, jutinda, jutikianta, kota ata. This is different. I can... Feel up here and the codes kind of change at the kataanda juto o vasta jutik i takarat anda jutakato o shta. Sorry, my dogs scared me. I'm feeling up here and I'm really kind of trying to feel what it is, kind of thing, and I was not expecting that. Jutakatesta jutoko onda jta ashta jutakato o shte. Now, as I do this, I get like a pinch kind of in my chest. So, I don't know if that's somehow related. Um, maybe it's just the codes that I kind of feel around that's kind of more focused on this knot. And I don't feel like it's like a knot in my, my chest. It's a knot in... I got, I got collective, I'm not sure, um, maybe for a percentage of the collective or something collective. Jutuku onda. Oh, this is big time. <laughs> yeah. I feel excited. I feel there's, um, we're about to get rocked with changes, y'all. I feel like it's about to get, it's about to amp up. It's about to become stronger. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was getting when I was feeling here. It's about, it's like it's constantly increasing. It's constantly going, and it's going to keep that way, and we're going to keep going up. I thought more light language wanted to come, but it kind of stopped. I think that's it. Um, okay, um, we're pushing 20 minutes. Wow, okay. So, um, much love and much blessings, and feel free to comment below, I would love to hear it, like, share, subscribe, big huge thanks to everybody who has subscribed so far, you're amazing, thank you, and um, have a great night and a great day.